Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 180. My name is Jason Urkelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com. Remember the dash to save the cash and buy and sell DVC.com. I can't believe we're 180. Yeah. My gosh. And uh, today is July 17th, 2024, which means 11th month window is June 17th, 2025. Seventh month window is February 17th, 2025. And as Scott mentioned, if you're looking to rent out your points or to rent some points, it is dvc-rental.com. Remember the dash to save the cash. I believe they are still the only rental company, or if not, one of the only few rental companies where you can check availability without having to pay any money. So... That, you know. that okay. There's one okay. There's, there's one other company that allows you to do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> the so, other ones charge you. So you, you know. So you, if you've, if you've gone down the rabbit hole of you don't want to go over here, just remember, you can come over here. You can check availability. You can see this is available. This is available, and you can do that all free of charge, and then figure out what you want to book, and then go from there. If you're looking to sell your Disney Vacation Club or you have questions about buying, it's buyandselldvc.com. Come visit us. We'll be uh, happy to help you out as well. And now we're going to start on the buy and sell side of things. And this is something that I took off of the internet. Um, And basically the person asked a question. They said, question, hi, I've had my offer accepted and it's with Disney now. But I've just had an email from broker telling me as I'm buying from an international buyer and I need to get an ITIN and I need to get my passport certified by the U.S. Embassy in London. Is this correct? I've read a lot about resale buying and I've never heard of anyone having to go to the embassy. Has anyone done this? Thanks. Well, first of all, I just want to say that when you look at listings, if you look at a listing in the description where it talks about the points and it says, 150 points coming 9124 and 150 points coming 9125. The majority of uh, brokers out there will list, if it's an international seller, right after that, it'll say international seller. I'm not saying every company lists as international seller, but most companies list international seller. Um, So if you were to buy from us, when you go to make the offer, we're going to let because you have to fill out your address and everything and we're going to and we're going to say hey you're an international buyer buying from an international seller you're going to have to get an itin number this is the process to get the itin number you know some international buyers that doesn't bother them they, they'll go through the process some already have an itin number but if you're an international buyer and you buy from a domestic seller you don't have to worry about any of those things so the fact that people, the, the fact that brokers put international seller on the listing, the reason that they put it on there really has changed over the years. I mean, it, it, it used to indicate that if you bought from international seller, you know, it's always going to make it through rider first refusal. Well, that's still the case. Like Disney doesn't want to deal with the FERC tax that the international seller has to pay. So yeah, your property is not going to have any problem making it through rider first refusal. But the other reason it's on there, it's more now because if you're an international buyer, do you want to get the ITIN? So we would let you know that up front. So you wouldn't buy it and then find out, you know, four weeks into buying it because it is a process that needs to be, it should be disclosed from the beginning because, um, you know, you may not want to go through the process. It's, it's like, Anyway, I don't want to... And this is only, again, if you're an international buyer and an international seller. If you're right. a U.S. buyer or a U.S. seller, this is not the case. So it's not as common of a scenario. Just, Correct. Just right. to make sure. I, mean, I know you've mentioned it a couple times already, but I just wanted to drill it in there that this is you know international to international. So uh, I just wanted to discuss that. So yes, if you are an international buyer and you buy from an international seller, you are required to get an ITN. Of course, if you already have it, perfect. But if you don't, then you have to get an ITIN number. And now we are on to the food review of the week. Come here, I'm gonna eat you. Get in my belly. 
So for today's food review, it was it was my birthday back in May, and I'm a, I'm a Landry's member, which means that you get a free gift, a twenty five dollar gift card um, for your birthday month, which can be used at any of the Landry's restaurants. So we decided to go to T Rex Cafe um, at Disney Springs, and to be honest, I had not been there si since the pandemic. Uh, they changed their menu a good amount, and they removed several of the top items of stuff that I used to buy. So for a while I was boycotting them, but the, the free $25 lured me back in and my wife and I went for lunch. Um, the, the, we got her meal and my meal. So the, the first thing I want to go over is my wife's meal, which was the tar pit fried shrimp uh, with tartar and cocktail sauce, seasoned fries, coleslaw, $26.99. We had a small difference of opinion here, but not too far uh, off. Um, both of us found that they had a very weird texture they were a bit spicy, which was odd, and they didn't taste very fresh. Um, I'm not saying that it tastes like frozen shrimp out of the box, but I mean, they, they kind of did. I gave it a 5.2, but some of that was probably because I dipped it in cocktail sauce and I dipped it in the tartar sauce, which helps mask the flavor. <laughs> um, my wife gave it an insanely disappointing 2.3. Uh, so not a great start to a restaurant that we used to love, but had boycotted for three years due to all the menu changes. Um, but I mean, you know, we, we want to try it again. And so far, not too stellar, unfortunately. It's not good. No, I think that's probably, I think 2.3 is one of the worst number of scores we've ever given. It might, it's up there with that mac macaron that I got. Actually, the macaroon from Disneyland that was, it was supposed to be a after, um, what's it called? Uh, the Matterhorn, and it was just a, pe a solid piece of like coconut with like white chocolate on top. That was pretty darn terrible. So th this was right up there with that. <laughs> and now we're on to the DVC dash rental side of things. For the from the rental side, I just wanted to discuss some of the spaciousness and amenities of the Disney Vacation Club villas. Uh, so we don't address it too often, as the majority of our renters get studios. But for comparison, a standard Disney room is around two hundred and sixty square feet. A Disney Vacation Club starts around 350 for the studios and goes up to 2,800 square feet for the Grand Villas. Uh, you've got the options of duo studios that'll sleep two, regular studios that sleep four to five, one bedrooms will sleep five, and typically, and two, be ten, two bedrooms sleep eight to nine, and then your Grand Villas will sleep up to 12. So it caters to families of all sizes, allows you room to spread out. Uh, you've got multiple living areas in them. Um, sometimes it's absolutely nice to have a separate area where you can close your door and just you and the wife can relax at night. Your kids can still be up in the living room if they want. Or if you've got little ones, they can go into a bedroom, close the door and go to sleep while you and your wife can still sit out and watch TV, have a drink of wine, whatever you and your family like to do. But it's just really nice to have that extra space sometimes. Another great thing is that all of, all of the... Um, the villas come in the studios, they come with kitchenettes, which means it's a small a small uh, refrigerator, like a dorm-sized fridge, uh, microwave, and coffee maker. All of the one bedrooms and up come with full kitchens. So you, you've got a, a bigger fridge, you've got the stove, an oven, microwave, you know, both of them have, you know, sinks. Um, the larger rooms, one bedrooms and up, come with laundry facilities in the rooms. The studios have washers and dryers on, like, a, a, on like one of the main floors, you've, if you're staying with the studios, you're able to go use the, the washers and dryers for free. Um, so you have to pay for laundry detergent if you don't have it with you. All of the DVC studios come with either balconies or if they're on the first floor, they'll, they'll come with the patio. And another great option, multiple bathrooms. I can't stress this one enough. If you've got a family and you want, you're trying to get ready in the morning, you know, everybody waiting on one bathroom is not normally the greatest idea. So having multiple bathrooms where one person can be showering and another bathroom, somebody's shaving and going to the bathroom. And it's just ha having that is very, very helpful when you've got family with you. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have written down here. Some, some, some examples of some of the cool things, I know I've gone over this, is, you know, imagine you're enjoying a Mickey waffle for breakfast in your fully equipped kitchen before you head out to the parks. In the studios, again, you can have little snacks, but again, you can do full, I know, whenever we stay sometimes in the one bedrooms, we'll, we'll have eggs or we'll, we'll actually make food, helps you save some money as well when you can make your own food in the, in the larger rooms. You hang out on your balcony at night with a refreshing drink, overlooking the beautiful resort scenery, 
And, you know, again, what's great is that, you know, kids can have their own movie night in the living room while the parents unwind in their separate space. I mean, there's a lot of really great options. Uh, typically, you know, studios are the least expensive. One bedrooms are typically about double the price of the studios, double the amount of points, so double the price. Two bedrooms are a little more. Grand villas are a lot more. The, the grand villas are a beautiful option, uh, definitely a lot more expensive than a regular two bedroom. You can typically get a couple two bedrooms for the price of a grand villa, but the grand villas are absolutely beautiful. And I mean, if you're looking to spread out, I mean, go again, we do mo we do mostly studios, but a lot of the DVC, a lot of regular DVC members don't do the studios because they, they, you know, when you go to the, the meetings for DVC, a lot of times you know, they emphasize how great it is to have a home away from home where you've got a kitchen and you can do your laundry and you've got your own privacy. So that is, well, the, I mean, the, I think the best thing to take away from this whole thing is that, to sum it up, <laughs> Disney has a lot of great options. And you know, for whether it's two of you in a room or 12 in a room, Disney's got you taken care of. So it just depends how much you want to spend on the vacation. There's lots of varieties to choose from. But besides all these rooms, obviously there's so many different resorts that all have different feels to them. So that there really is something for everyone. No matter what trip you're on, there's something for everyone. And if you, if you switch it up, every trip's a different trip. Like we used to do the split stays in the past. One of my favorite trips was a split. My wife won't agree with me because she's the one who had to pack up everything. But one of my favorite trips was a split stay between Beach Club and uh, Jumbo House at Animal Kingdom. You know, so you, we had Jumbo House, very, very, very dark and mahogany's and exotic with the animals and African themed. And we did that for a couple nights. And we jumped over to Beach Club, which is bright and airy and pools and you know beachside themed. So I mean, just two completely different vacations. I mean, five miles apart. You know, I mean, ten miles apart. You know, it's it's they're they're so close to each other, but it's just night and day from what they are. So it's really, I, that's one of the things I absolutely love about Disney is that they're all just very, very different and they really cater to what you want. You know, if you, some people don't like the, the darkness of Animal Kingdom and they'll go for the beach club. So, I mean, there's something for everyone. So just curious question, yes. do you actually unpack your suitcase and put clothes in the we did. drawers? Or? We did. No, no, I'm asking you though. Me, me personally? Yeah, you personally. My wonderful wife does that typically. Oh, okay. I just I stand there looking like eye candy. I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah. basically my job, and she she she's the one who takes care of putting the food in the fridge and putting the the, the clothes away. And I mean, I I'd, I'd be I'd be lost if I didn't have her with me. I I, I wouldn't know what to do. I I it would be a mess. So th thank goodness she's around. Because I do not unpack my suitcase. <laughs> you don't my either. wife will unpack my well, yeah. uh, kid's suitcase or her suitcase, but I'm like, no. So, you, you unpack yours, you're saying? No, no, no. I, I mean, I just take the stuff out of the suitcase mm -hmm. as I need it. I don't unpack oh, it. Oh, I got you. Put it in the... You'll put it away. You you, no, just, no. you handle your own clothes, but you yeah. leave it in the suitcase and right. you take it out as needed. So I didn't know if that is a common thing or uncommon thing. or So I was just curious. I think it, maybe once or twice in the past we've done that, but normally we always take it out and put it in the drawers. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, just, we're going to end on that note right there. Let us know. Are you a... Do you unpack everything out of the suitcase? Put it away. I mean, do you? I mean, are you also hanging up stuff in the closet? Yes. Oh, hang, hang up stuff in the closet as well. We, we get we get fancy. So we got to know what you guys do out there. Do you live out of your suitcase, or do you unpack everything when you arrive at Disney? Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> all right, let's end on that note, and we'll see you next week. Again, check out all of our social media. We're on TikTok. We're on YouTube. We got this is all part of the YouTube and the podcast. You know, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, Te technically we're on Pinterest. I mean, don't look for us because we can post anything probably in 10 years, but we're everywhere. Please follow us, watch us, and we hope you're enjoying. Have a great day.